All right, so let's pull up the uh, Conversions Lab 2 again. Does everybody have a copy, of, well, at least have a hard copy of this if you wanted one? All right, I'm going to hang on to this just to be on the safe side. So we talked uh, last week about this lab and you know we went through the whole practice scenario thing. Uh, when I went back and watched the video that I recorded on the 18th, it was uh, like, it was booming. I'm still getting this new microphone kind of figured out, so just make sure you turn your volume down for that one. Um, but we got a lot of videos that were either linked or embedded in here. Uh, did anybody have any questions about any of the problems that we did when we walked through the practice scenario? We mentioned that on one of these parts, yes, yeah, for number two, um, you know, we did one liter was I think 0.26 gallons and then um, for on the old example we did one gallon was 3.78 liters so hey Jacob was the bus late or something? No, I'm... Okay all right so let's pull up the um, this here critical thinking lab one traveling sales rep uh, uh, again, I forgot to rename that Conversions Lab 2, so I, I apologize there. But I think I sent an announcement out about it. So again, um, you know, everything was, like all the questions were the same except for small differences. Like, you know, on our practice scenario, it was asking for pesos, and on the actual lab, it's asking for euros. But it tells you in the, in the narrative up there that, uh, 0.85 euros is one dollar. So, um, if you haven't attempted this yet, you want to make sure that you do this and get it done because it's due tonight. You want to make sure you get that done before you do the test. Um, those of you that have already taken a crack at this, are there any that you have a question about that you want to get uh, cleared up for our for our test review? Pretty much okay. Did the practice scenario help with that? Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> I figured that would be a little bit better, or hope to be a little bit better than just kind of going into it blind. Um, I know uh, uh, previous 143 teachers have just handed this out and said, "Here you go." Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, uh, you know, I've like I said, I spent uh, I can't remember how many years. I think it's 12 years teaching public school, can't do that. You'll have an army of parents with pitchforks and torches coming after you. All right, so everybody's, if you haven't done this yet, you're okay to tackle it. You've got enough uh, that we did last week. You've got videos, you're good. You don't need anything else. We beat it to death. Everybody good? All right, I will take your word for it. Okay, so let's go back to the notes that are located in Conversions Lab 1. And we're just, again, one more time, going to run through those real quick. If we need to, we can look at a couple of questions from the actual Conversions Lab itself. If you still aren't clear as to why you missed some of those, we can get that cleared up for sure. So again, we talked about the unit fraction. And, you know, I'm, in doing this, I realized that, you know, everybody doesn't use this. <clears throat> and I forgot that I actually didn't used to use this either. Um, I started using it when I was teaching the support classes uh, because the 143 teacher did it this way. And then I just kind of got stuck doing it this way. Uh, and I really just didn't do it because I forgot. That was all. But once I started doing it again, I was like, oh, yeah, this is a lot better. So, again, the purpose of the unit fraction is to uh, get out of one unit and into the one that they're asking for. Again, with the way the unit fraction works is if you're just doing a single unit conversion, when the unit that you're looking for shows up in the top of the next column, that's as far as you have to go. And a good rule of thumb is to try to have as many ones in the bottom as you can because that way you don't have to do a whole lot of dividing, if any. Um, again, remember that the conversion chart in Moodle 
that was not made by the textbook company. So uh, your answers, and you probably saw this when you did Conversions Lab 1, that some of the answers that you got were not, you know, not exact. Um, and you know, every year I get people that message me and say, hey, I, the answer I got wasn't in Moodle. Um, you know, they may, not have they may not have watched the videos, so it is what it is. But <clears throat> again, we also talked about how on this conversion chart, there are different options. So like for instance, this one here, we said you're going feet to meters, so you can put one foot in the bottom and you know, put your meter factor in the top, or you can put one meter in the top and put your feet factor in the bottom. Either way, you come out with the, you know, pretty much the same answer. It's just when you go from US to metric, things kind of, you know, as they say, get lost in the wash. Um, but I've got it in here twice. The chart in Moodle is not made by the book company, so the answers will not line up exactly. This will also probably happen on the test, so just be aware of that, okay? We didn't really do much with nautical miles or knots or anything like that. Barrels, again, we noticed that the, the, uh, there was a di an additional issue that popped up with the water barrel question um, in Conversions Lab 1 because the petroleum barrel question was just asking for the gallons, but the water barrel question was asking for the quarts. So you know, not only had to switch barrels, but you also had to take it to quarts, and that got a lot of folks in some of the online sections as well, but we'll, we get it straightened out. Dual unit conversion or a rate conversion is when you've got you know something like a speed or you know things of that sort and you got to make sure that anything that is getting converted has been converted so like in this one they're both over hours you didn't have to mess with the hours but here 60 miles per hour into feet per second you had to take care of your miles first then you had to come back and get your hours and then when feet was over seconds that's how you know that you got it uh, arranged correctly and then you can do all sorts of factor reducing and things like that and come out with 88 feet per second. And then we talked, started talking about temperatures. You've got two temperature formulas on your chart. You've got uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit and then Kelvin is on the next page of these notes. Um, unit rate, all right. Again, this one still got a couple people. Remember, price goes on top price always goes on top and then of course you know the one that was on that was number 20 on the student copy still got some folks because it switched to bottles instead of just ounces so you know it's just little things like that that they sneak in there so again kelvin is mostly a scientific measure but you know you've got all your formulas there um, <clears throat> I think somebody in here asked if you could use 1.8 instead of 9 fifths. You definitely can. It's not going to hurt anything. I would not try to use the decimal version of 5 ninths though because five, when you divide by 9 it makes a repeating decimal. So you're better off just to leave that one as a fraction. We didn't hammer converting money as much as we used to in the past. Uh, we just kind of you know, did what we needed to do for Conversions Lab 2. So don't worry about that part. All right. So, a couple of things on the test. All right. Okay. So, there is not a printable copy of the test questions for safety reasons. You know, when I was first building this class, I was very naive and I had it all up, uploaded. I was like, yeah, there we go, paper copy of the test. I was like, oh, no. I, mean, I know exactly what they're going to do with that. So I took that out. <clears throat> um, and so to find the questions, you just open your test. Now, I should have everybody in their test groups as of yesterday morning. Um, you know, we were out of town all weekend, and I just, you know, you get to Knoxville and you see all the pretty flashing lights and you forget everything. Um, but double check and make sure that one of these four test versions is popping up for you. And there is also another video that we recorded on August 30th uh, of doing test review that you can check out also. Um, if you know one of the two that still aren't here, you need to tell them that the, they need to check out that video as well as the one that I'm recording right now. 
that way they you know they have all their bases covered um, it's really not a bad test uh, I can't remember how many questions it has I want to say at least 20 maybe 25 it's in the 20 to 30 range somewhere around there but I mean it's, it's not gonna kill you um, but I did have someone ask a good question uh, this morning that's in the online late start see for the online late start folks their class just started yesterday so they've got this this and uh, they've got conversions lab one conversions lab two and the test all open right now because they, they've got to get caught up I've got to get everybody on the same on the same schedule um, so they're asking you know does it matter if they do conversions lab two before they do conversions lab one I would assume that they're asking that because conversions lab two only has four questions you know uh, so the answer to that is technically no it doesn't matter which one you do first but if you think about it conversions lab one leads into conversions lab two they both lead into the test so I just said yeah I would do them one then two then the test so I told you told you guys all, all that to tell you this again please please make sure that you finish conversions lab two before you start the test if you still have yet to turn in conversions lab two you need to do that by tonight so that you don't start racking up uh, late grade penalties um, looks like we've got four of the nine people that have already turned it in which is fine you still got plenty of time <clears throat> um, and you know if you were waiting until we came back today to kind of go back go through things that's perfectly fine as well um, but uh, yeah make sure that you get conversions lab 2 completed before you start the test okay uh, that's just a really good uh, you know habit to get into so then on Tuesday when we come back we will start the uh, percent section which is what which is a uh, half of what gives math 143 its horrible reputation so can't wait for that <laughs> it's really not that bad it's just a crap ton of formulas uh, and a lot of working backwards as well and not everybody is you know comfortable with that so we just you know work through it that way but so if y'all don't have any questions about the test or the labs or anything then I'm, uh, I'm yes is the test timed? no no <laughs> I just saw uh, lamb back there go oh my god um, for several reasons um, and you, by the way I taught uh, Amber's sister years ago and I always called her Lamb Chop so it's really hard for me not to call her Lamb Chop Junior so I'm really working because every time I did that with her sister she like if she had a knife she would have thrown it at my head uh, <clears throat> but um, the reason why I don't time the test um, is basically because it's hard to do that and then like if someone has testing accommodations where they get extended time it's hard to do that in Moodle so what I do is I just do the test time frame like I do the regular lab time frame. It opens on a certain date. It closes on this date eight days later. You pick a time uh, somewhere in those eight days to get it done. Just don't open it and leave it. Because the way Moodle is, if, you don't, if you're inactive in it for a certain amount of time, it will time you out. And I think if that happens, it will go ahead and submit it for you. Okay. Uh, now, one thing I didn't mention, <clears throat> which I'm just not thought of, um, you can use every resource that we've given you in Moodle on this test. You can use your notes. You can use the videos. You can you know, use the conversion chart. Uh, you know, use your notes. Use my notes. Use everything that you have because the way that I have always operated is what is the purpose of sitting here and taking all these notes if you can't use them when you need them right I mean and when you need them on the stinking test so yeah 
use your notes and, and, and you know if you want to use the book you can use the book too um, I will say after the conversion section though we don't really use the book that much uh, but if you want to use it to fall back on that's perfectly fine uh, that's what it's there for uh, I've just at this point I've got so much of my own stuff in here now I've just kind of you know the books like you know every once in a while we'll do like practice problems out of the book and put them on the board um, but uh, now nah, with this book it's really hard to go from like you know how, how some people are used to you know start at chapter one go to the end or stuff like that can't really do that but, but yeah it's not timed because uh, you know Moodle's kind of rigid in that like say if you did have testing accommodations to where like say if I <clears throat> if I set a time limit of three hours and you got a 150 percent extended time accommodation I would have to go into Moodle and schedule a day for like a separate day and then set that amount of time as your time limit for as you know set it as four and a half hours instead of three so it would just, you know, <clears throat> it, it just gets to be a really big headache. So I talked to our, uh, I think it, I think he's a, called the Director of Enrollment Management, but it's Kendrick McDonald's is who you see if you have accommodations. And I asked him, like, how's eight days? Is eight days enough time? And he's like, yeah, if they can't get it done in eight days, then they really need to look at uh, probably withdrawing. <laughs> So yeah, it's not timed, just <clears throat> I would just, you know, don't start it until like, okay, I've got this amount of time blocked out. Uh, I wanna say that it'll probably take you, I mean, honestly, it shouldn't take you more than an hour, if that long. I mean, I try not to kill you with these things, okay? So just, but just make sure that you have, you know, a time set aside where you're not going to have any interruptions or have to, have to run out or do anything where you'd have to leave your computer. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Last one, I promise. Yeah. For these longer decimals, typically like how many decimal places do you want us? Well, that's a good question. Um, some questions on the conversion section and on the percent section some of the questions will say take it to this decimal place or take it to that decimal place uh i would say since you know the con this conversion chart is going to cause you know again it, it might make a decimal that's not listed i think most of the decimals in the questions go to either two or three places I don't think they go past three. I, I don't, I, I've, uh, I can't remember for sure, um, but I would, I mean, I try to, I usually try to stop at three. Cause I mean, if you can't get it by then, I mean, it's not chemistry, you know? You don't need to worry about that extra 10 thousandths digit that if you have it, you're gonna blow up the whole lab or whatever. Um, <clears throat> that's why I don't teach chemistry. Like, where do I run it to? Uh, we better start running. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's that, it's that way. So, <clears throat> but yeah, I think most, most questions three should do it. Um, um, a good rule of thumb is look at how many are in the numbers that are given and just kind of try to match that. Yeah. All right. Anything else? All right. I had a little bit of a short lesson or a short class today. Test reviews are kind of that way, but, you know, uh, there's only so many times I can force feed you the same information. So, uh, again, make sure that you get Conversions Lab 2 done tonight. Now, those that are in the uh, online late start that are going to be watching this, you've got different due dates. If you're, uh, those that are in the online late start, everything is due on the 30th, just like the test. So, but for you guys, it's due, your Conversions Lab 2 is due tonight for WRM2. All right, we will see you.